Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1980s. Yeah, I hate that kind of talking and you know it. Why can't you grow old gracefully, you old cow? This is episode 175, recorded February 17th, 2021. Gruesome Magazine. I am your host, Jeff Moore, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1980 and 1989. Each episode, my co-host Bill Mulligan, Crystal Cleveland, and Chad Hunt, and I will tackle another classic or not-so-classic film from this radical, gory, influential, and gruesome decade. Joining me tonight is Crystal Cleveland, the living dead girl, and co-host of Gruesome Magazine Podcast. How you doing, Crystal? I'm great i i didn't know that i was next to goat boy i mean you feel pretty special <laughs> next yeah. to, oh i forget it. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, who the um, goat boy? oh me I'm her father. Uh, <laughs> that's why i was like i was like oh it's a goat boy chad well you're kitty you're kitty you're kitty corner for me so apparently you're you're talking about bill or chad kitty corner like caddy oh caddy oh, wumpus well. That, yeah. That's in Iowa, yeah. I got that's the kitty like corner right here. Crystal. Like crick, like yeah, like crick. Yeah. <laughs> I know the kitty. Also kitty, joining kitty, us kitty. is Chad Hunt, comic book <laughs> artist and co-host of Decades of War, the Classic Era, and uh, the 1970s. Chad. Yes. Well, I've rubbed my forehead raw right here where I keep having to do face palms. Yeah. But other than that, I'm, nah, I'm good. I'll, I'll oh, tell you. He Christina. is Goat Boy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, well, we'll let, we'll let you know if you can Robinson, Robinson Goat Boy. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And last but not least is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, special effects and guru, and co host of Decades of Horror of the 1970s. How you doing, Bill? I, I'm getting ready for what seems to be it's going to be a night of tomfoolery based on everything so far. So. <laughs> oh, my God. Tom Foolery. There's a Foolery. Oh, like right Kitty there. Corner and Tom that Foolery. That would be Jeff Foolery to you. <laughs> this, could, this could be a brouhaha before it's all over. Maybe even a hoot oh, nanny. Oh, all right. yeah. Uh-oh. So, uh, we lost all the under 50 crowd now. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think there's a song. It makes me think of a song. We're going to have a rhubarb. They had a rhubarb right out there in the field. Um, oh, my God. So our film. <laughs> what podcast is this? <laughs> well, Bill said brouhaha. You can't. You're not allowed to say brouhaha unless you say rhubarb too. That's the rule. Uh, where, our film where, tonight. Where am I? <laughs> not Iowa, I guess. Man, it's <laughs> it's uh, baseball slang. Um, oh. Oh, okay. That makes sense. It's it's uh, if they had a rhubarb out of you know the, it's an argument on the field with the oh. umpire. It's a rhubarb. So our film today is The Church, released March 10th, 1989 in Italy. It was a little later before it got to the uh, U.S. I think uh, it had a limited release in uh, 1990 in video in 1991, directed by, oh, I forgot to look up pronunciation, so Michele mm. Solavi, um, who is sort of a... Uh, disciple mentee of Dario Argento is that correct Bill yeah I, I, he, he he first became famous doing a documentary on on uh, Dario who mm -hmm. uh, th and I think that's where I first learned how cool Dario was was watching that I think it was called the haunted world of Dario Argento or something like that. Oh, okay great documentary and made me want to seek out Argento stuff so yeah he and he definitely learned well and Argento is uh, one of three producers, but I think the main one listed on the credits uh, as well. He's also one of the co-writers along with Franco Farini and Suave. The cast includes Hugh Quarshi, mm -hmm. sure. Thomas Serrana, Theodore Caliapin, Caliapin Jr., I don't know, Barbara Capisti, and Asia Argento. Asia. Well, I no, I think it's pronounced Asia. Is Asia. it? Well, yeah. uh, well, well, when I tried to look it up, it, they had the accent on the first syllable. But Ozzy, are I, you serious? I've been I, saying 
I, I swear to God, I have heard it. Ever. Oh my God. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure she's I'm used sure to Bill, it by now. Bill's probably heard uh, it somewhere in actual speaking. Oh so my God, I feel maybe. Like, yeah. I'm so listen, bad. I'm not have I been, have I been saying Oreo the right way all these years? <laughs> That's how I, I feel. I'm them like. Oreos. Yeah. Like an Oreos when, with if you had a like all Italian cast, you know, they changed their names like Antonio Margaretti. Well, your name's Dave Smith now. On, yeah. the, on the credits. Good. That's easy to pronounce. Yeah, or, or Tony Tony Margaret. Um, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so the synopsis. Oh, boy. Huh? An old Gothic cathedral built over a mass grave develops strange powers that trap a number of people inside with ghosts from a 12th century massacre, seeking to resurrect an ancient demon from the bowels of the earth. See, it is Demon's Three. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, well, it started out that way, apparently. Yeah. Uh, the production company is listed, just to get through some uh, quick details here, production company is listed as ADC Films, and we already said it was released on March 10th, 1989 in Italy, August 22nd, 1990, a limited theatrical release in the U.S., and January 30th, 1991, the video premiere. Also known as La Chiesa, which I believe means the church in Italy. Uh, but we also have like any variation of anything with the word demon in it, along with Demons 3, Cathedral of Demons, Demon Cathedral, In the Land of the Demons, and on and on. Wow. Uh, Could they stick the word demons more often? Yeah, yeah. Demon Cathedral uh, in the Land of Demons full of demons. Demons, demons, demons. In the demon bathroom. Oh. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of demon places. There, uh, this was filmed a little bit in Hamburg. They were that was supposed to be set in Germany, oh. but they couldn't get a church uh, to let them film oh, a, a show about demonic possession. Yeah. <laughs> For some reason, until oh. they decided to look in Eastern Europe, and they found a church in Budapest, Hungary, that would let them film. Uh, and then also uh, various places in Italy and in Rome and a couple of studios. So filming dates were September 4th to November 19th, 1988. Estimated budget, three and a half million. That seems a little high, although the sets were pretty There's cool. a lot. I think that, I think yeah. it. I think this is the one time where I'm like, yeah, I mean, they had that big, massive piece. I mean, a lot of it, they've yeah. got a lot of mechanics and everything in this. I think. I think that seems legit. Yeah. A lot of cool hallucinations. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, domestic box office. And this, we just did another one like this. I can't, was that, was that shock? Yeah. Was, had Lyra, uh, 1.926 billion Italian Lyra. Oh my God. That must be an incredible amount of money in American dollars. Which <laughs> translates to about 1.4 million in 1989. I take it back. Dollars. So, <laughs> If Sad. the three and a half million is correct, it did not make money, at least at the theater. Mm. Um, See, they should have called it Demons Three. So apparently, it's over <laughs> at that time anyway. It was over a thousand lira per dollar. Oh God, that's sad. Uh, all right, taglines. Uh, mm. uh, mm. Not impressive. Mm-mm. Want to read the taglines? Oh, okay. You haven't got a prayer. Get it, church? You haven't got uh, this. Yeah. Number two, it will make you squirm. I think they thought I it don't understand that. Movie. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Where, where's the squirming part? That 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 would be better for a movie like uh, I don't know, Squirm. Slither. Yeah. 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 It'll make. Well, you I was slither. I was It'll squirming a little bit during the. Uh, oh, the you know what? Thing. You're absolutely right. Every time, every time, little baby Azia shows up, uh, and and, the, and they're getting all pervy with her. I was squirming. Yep. So okay, fair enough. Tagline. I'll give it to you. <laughs> and last but not least, let's go back to the first one. In this unholy sanctuary, you haven't got a prayer. Well, where haven't you got a prayer in the first one, then? Somewhere the demon bathroom. The unholy, they're, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're just being more specific in case you didn't get it. Right. Right. So. And, you know, because the title is The Church, you might not have realized that that's what they meant oh. about prayer. You sure. dare open the toilet of Satan? <laughs> oh, that's All right. nasty. Well, let's go with uh, first impressions here. And uh, when did you guys first see this? 
And what did you think of it then? And what did it look like now? And I'm going to start with Mr. Chad Hunt. <gasps> okay. Oh, my gosh. I think. Okay. <laughs> um, I've read about this in Fangoria. And um, the pictures that they showed, if I am not mistaken, was the the goat rape scene and then the one with the where the bat guy is, has his arms around yeah. a naked, naked girl. And, and I was like, and there was, I remember something alluding to this was supposed to be demons three and being a big fan of those, those two, I was like, um, I got to see this, but I don't think I, I didn't see it in the theater. I think it ended up getting a release on VHS or, or something that, that I ended up watching it. And I found it very, um, very good. Um, it wasn't the the balls to the wall action that Demons was, uh, or any of the no helicopters come crashing through the ceiling, mm-hmm. or, or any, anything anything like that. But it was um, a little more subdued than Demons, and um, and it was its own story. And I didn't find out till later that they really veered away from. Uh, trying to associate it with uh, demons, the movie Demons. So I just found it very creepy. Um, all these these types of movies, like uh, uh, Fulci's, uh, you know, the Gates of Hell uh, movies, and 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 those that uh, I really love. The the music was really cool. Um, mm-hmm. You can't go wrong with with Goblin and and those guys. Um, and and I'm glad it was sort of a departure from uh, Argento's movies um i went on to appreciate Sawavi and cemetery man and a couple of those movies that he did after after this but this was a very very good effort for him you know um some of those shots were, were very good the effects were awesome i love the demon head that was rising at the end that was sh- sh- made out of people you know but it was yeah. shaped mm-hmm. like the devil's head and and um just some very cool stuff like that. And, and I just loved it. It was a, it's one of those Italian horror films that I, I can keep watching and, and um, I don't get, get tired of it. You know, if, you know, it, so it was a very good movie and it still holds up, I think to this, to this day as um, just a creepy ass satanic demonistic de- demonic, whatever you want to call it. type mm-hmm. film. And um, yeah, and it holds up now very well i mean i always enjoy watching it so i was glad uh, we picked this one and that's my cue to get out of here yeah (laughs) all right (laughs) cleveland how about you when was the first time that you saw this yesterday was the first time i've seen this movie and i gotta tell you i'm so sad that yesterday was the first time that I saw this movie. I really loved this movie, actually. I I have to say, like Chad mentioned, it it is reminiscent of Fulci in some ways. Some of the, well, some of the editing, you know, those first beginning top shots, but <laughs> <laughs> the music too. I I told oh, I was like, the music is fantastic. Some of the shots were just so compelling too. I love the shot through the helmet with the cross. Yeah, I just think mm-hmm. I think a lot. They're very creative with everything. I think you know, like when we were talking about with the budget, I can see the budget there with things like that and all of the costuming. It really hit a lot of. I, I really like that it's not zombies and it's demons mm-hmm. instead. Kind of had a zombie feel considering the way everything was spreading, which is kind of mm-hmm. unusual. But I'll buy it. Whatever. I wasn't comfortable with some of the. I'm just gonna. I, I'm sorry. It's Asia to me. I know. I'm probably oh, so. Yes. I'm sorry if I'm yeah. pronouncing this horribly wrong. Um, but everyone did a fantastic job too. The actors were amazing. I love the cast. I. I don't know. I. I'm disappointed. Like I said, that this was the first time I've seen it. It. It's something that would completely be up my alley, mm-hmm. and I don't know why I've never seen. I love Argento. I love Suspiria. I don't really get why I never watched it before, but I'm glad that I did. And I would totally watch it again. I probably will, because I think I could 
probably pick up some things I didn't last time. And I wish they'd made even another one after this because they left it open at the end. So would have been down with that. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's interesting. I like that you uh, first saw it because that helps give us a different mm. perspective. Uh, Mr. Bill Mulligan. Well, not not too different because I, I just saw it. <laughs> he had a hand puppet up there. I thought it, me too. I thought you were like fanning <laughs> yourself. Um, I saw it just a few days ago. First time I saw it was just a few days ago. Oh, you ago. too. Okay. Yeah, and really? it is weird that, yeah, because I like, so I love Cemetery Man. It's one of my favorites. And uh, I like some of his other things too. But for some reason, it kind of fell through the cracks. I think part of it is that if you look at the cover, the uh, the DVD cover, that I think is the one that I saw in the in the back in the day when we had uh, video stores. It's really uninspired. It doesn't look. It looks like it could be one of a million things. It, it very non-distinctive. And I do remember what Chad was talking about the the pictures that they showed. The two pictures were the rapey goat demon, and the that creepy winged angel thing with the naked woman that I, I learned now was taken from a Boris Vallejo. Is that how it worked? Yeah. Painting. Yeah. And yes, I, I think I've seen that picture. So those were two really great images. And I'm a, I was a little disappointed in watching it that those things were few and far between. And this, this is one of those Italian movies that has very little plot, very little characters. I mean, all these people are brought into this church and then start getting killed one at a time, but we haven't really got to know them very well. So, uh, it, it, what happens to them doesn't quite have the resonance that it should. Characters seem to be dropped for no reason. Characters that I thought would be the main characters seem to just sort of get shuffled off at the end and a new priest shows up and now he's the main character. So it's got, it's got its flaws. But it, it definitely has the feel to me of a film that I will like more the second time I see it. Now that I know, don't go looking for story. Don't be looking for mm -hmm. plot. It's there's not there's no plot. Mm. Just go for the ride and appreciate it. And and in that way, I think I'll really like it a lot because it's got a lot of cool things that I like. The opening, I'm thinking this is, you know, the uh, Blind Dead here. Or Knights Templar are just super villains. And and I did like what you're talking about the the cross looking at yeah. the camera view. Yeah. So Avi so Avi is sort of like the 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 middle somewhere between Fulci on one end and Argento on the other. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he's he's a lot slicker than Fulci, mm -hmm. who could be pretty rough, pretty you know pretty raw. I've always yeah. you know I've always like thought his like his edits sometimes are so yeah. yeah. I always thought like Fulci is like Fulci is like that punk rocks grunge star. That you see in a yeah. seedy little nightclub and everything. He's got a lot of raw talent, but it's raw. You know, I may not actually know how to play the guitar, but there's something there. There's a genius <laughs> there. And Argento is like an arena guy, you know, big hair and and you know, flames shooting up and sparks and everything. And somewhere in the middle is Soavi, who I'm probably totally mispronouncing, as we are everything, but you know. <laughs> it's not the worst thing that ever happened to uh, Zia Argento that we mispronounced her name. Or on this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say? So I liked it. I liked it, but but it's not it's not what I was it's not what I was hoping for, but but uh I think um, subsequent viewings will elevate it in my mind. It's got that feel to me. Yeah, I'm kinda with you there because uh I saw this a few years ago and for some reason I don't know, I started hearing about it. I think maybe people in the you know, horror connections on social media were talking about it being available on, you know, either Shutter or Prime Video or something. So I watched it, and I, I remember thinking, this is crazy. This is all out, you know. Well, then when I went back and watched it this week, I was like, what happened? It doesn't seem that all out. Although when you go through piece by piece by piece of what happened, that's pretty nasty. Mm -hmm. uh, but this time, the I, and I watched it a second time, Bill. That's what I'm kind of getting to, and it, I liked it a lot better. <laughs> This time around, the first time around, I could not get at the opening. I could not get Monty Python and the Holy Grail out of my head. <laughs> yeah. Oh, see, I kind of thought that for like a split second, but but it was so serious. Well, when they know, when I... they're riding up, I'm like going, "Where's the guy? <laughs> the, the coconuts?" <laughs> <laughs> and, 
when the, when the little guy runs out of the bushes and says, over here, over here, and points out the six, six, sixes, I'm like, that's Terry Gilliam. It's gotta be yeah. 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 Little, you know. Well, and those six, six, the, the triple sixes is so much like the omen, like how they had right. it. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, but, and then when they get, you know, it's, when they start to massacre everybody, that's pretty crazy. And the way they throw everybody oh. into that pit and, and, uh, the positions and still alive. And yeah, right. Right. <laughs> the, the one next to him was like, that's like the guy I felt the worst for because he had to keep his mouth open when they started shoveling <laughs> dirt into yeah. it. Like, uh, uh, I hope he got uh, a bonus. The actors. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> um, but, uh, and, and then when they start, even even after that, then they start with the cart and the dead people. I'm here and bring out your I dead. You. Yeah, <laughs> I did too. Uh, and I apologize to the film for that. So the second time around, I, I sort of like forced myself. I, you know, I shut Monty Python out of my head. Um, I love these sets in the church. Or mm -hmm. I don't know if all of those were in the church or how many of them were maybe studios, but those were really, really nice. Uh, yeah. Very detailed and uh, they certainly looked real, um, and that's a, a, you mentioned it too that uh, you can sort of see the Argento effect with when the cross falls through the floor and you get yeah. the oh, yeah. glowing blue light yeah, the the blue, coming yeah. up from the cross. That was that was pretty cool too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this is really like the, a movie, lot of these. the movie kind of flips at that point because up to that point I was thinking you know this is cool and everything, but it it looks realistic. You know, like there's there's not a lot of um, art deco stuff or anything, yeah, that, yeah. you know. And then when that happens, it's almost like the movie flips and suddenly becomes more brightly colored. So maybe maybe that was a deliberate choice. Like uh, like that world came in. It's it's mm -hmm. probably it probably was an artistic choice. Like at that point. Yeah. So there's, I mean, return. there's crazy stuff going crazy stuff going on here. I mean, you get the guy mm -hmm. after the blue light comes out. He pulls the bag out of the hole, which I, you know, how do how do you do that? Because the hole looked bottomless. He right. pulls this bag out, and it should be considering the lady fell into that, and then somehow it's the subway. Yeah. yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, that, that's another one. So, so yeah, he's yeah. armed. It comes up and strangle him, and then you find later everything goes away, and he's strangling himself, and his arms are all muddy. Uh, so there's a bunch of hallucinations. And when he he get, he cuts his wrist, so apparently that lets the demons in. Is that the hmm. the deal? And and then sure. he goes to call uh, 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 what is her name, Lisa. He he tries to Lisa. call Lisa yeah. on the phone, and all he does is. Uh, 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 oh yeah. Yeah, thinking yeah. like yeah, what? And she, yeah, and she's like you perv. Yeah. And yeah. Up on her. Yeah, she she stayed on the line way real. longer than she should. Yeah, yeah. Or, uh, yeah she, did. she did. She stayed on the line yeah. quite a while. Uh, well, he's, he's one of these dumb horror movie heroes that we, we only have in horror movies. Where first you drop the cross and it falls into a bottomless pit. Now I don't know about you, but that's when I leave. I get right <laughs> yeah. out of there. glowing blue light. <laughs> I mean, best case scenario, I just destroyed an ancient artifact. Worst case scenario, demons. But no, no, he's going to reach into it, which you would never do. Finds a bag. Why is it there? I don't know. Takes it out. It's like, okay, dude, you've now screwed up twice in the last 30 seconds. And there's only one thing you could do to make it worse. Open the bag. Oh, my God. You just, you just want to die. You just want to die, and you want to take us all with you. Oh, reach into the hole. Yeah. Well, then... Um... You know, I, he does that. There's that thing where he's at his typewriter and he's uh, Lottie, who is up to uh, Argeno, and he's pounding on the six key, you know. And I'm thinking, you know, all work and no play make Evan a dull boy. Uh, but then, then he says, you know, uh, Lisa shows up and asks him what's been going on. And he goes, oh, not much. And then he goes, I hadn't been there very long when the sacristan appeared. The idiot jumped yeah. on me like a maniac. Lucky it was dark, so he didn't recognize me. Sweetheart, don't I get a kiss? <laughs> he just yeah. he just turns Mr. Perv then, you know. He's yeah. he's uh of course he doesn't tell how he uh threw the guy down and anyway, he just totally yeah, pervs out. Um does that I you know, I'm gonna fix your tummy and and then 
there's all these weird little things. Herman is is trying to wash out Lottie's face, and and he's got a little demon face in the mirror mm-hmm. just for a flash. And uh, uh, then he's he's no longer the sacristan. I just want to do evil and kill. And then he he <laughs> uh, we find out he doesn't know which end of the jackhammer to operate <laughs> or something. Uh. Well, yeah. I think he was trying yeah, to kill yeah. himself. I think yeah, he, was he was trying was. to kill himself. But... Oh, death by jackhammer is like the worst suicide you could possibly hey, do. That's yeah. how. I, that's how I want to go. Painful, slow, and messy. Didn't no. take though. Didn't take. No. <laughs> he shows up later with no nary a drop of blood on him. I think. Um, you get that weird demon that comes out of the baptismal font. Yeah, that big like rubber fish one man. Guy. I, yeah, yeah, Love like crafty and looking. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then a I was. Lo- a lot of these out. cool things they only show up once. I mean that the the right. weird angel Vallejo demon is really cool looking, but oh, he's got yeah. a memorable shot. But that's virtually all he has yeah. is a memorable yeah. shot. I, but he's I, not I made the whole movie with that thing. Yeah, but then when they when they go back, then it's not. He's just like, yeah. you know, it's just a hallucination. There's really nobody there. Um, I love the uh, when they finally the door shut and trapped the bride. That was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I never did quite get how the veil wrapped around the gears, but anyway, uh, mm-hmm. it's still I see it catching her and pulling her in, and she's stuck there up tight up against the thing. And what do they come to cut her out with? One of them has a pair of. Uh, the tiniest the little, cutting oh, the implements. Little scissors <laughs> that come out of a Swiss Army knife. <laughs> yeah. They should have used a jackhammer. But, but still, even before that, she's like, stop moving, stop moving, you're going to ruin the dress. If that happened, there, there's no way that they would be as concerned about the dress no. as they were. Mm-hmm. That's insanity. Well, they, it's yeah. obviously a horrible, well, maybe in that time. But, I yeah. mean, it's, it's like, uh, that dress is ruined already, being slammed in that door. Ruined. Well, and there's right. there's one spot too where they uh, um, come to uh, they're walking. They're kind of it's sort of like just before the finale. They're walk. They're the cameras going through the church and showing all these kids and all these weird, you know, like oh, one yeah. kid's playing the trumpet and one kid is praying. One kid's sucking his thumb. Another kid's crying. Another kid is I don't know. Apparently he's wrapping himself in plastic or something i just yeah. it was just weird it was i and i felt like there was something missing like that scene should have had more punch to it uh maybe yes, some i agree some music well, or something i don't know that brings up another point too because the teacher was like i've got to be able to call their parents because their parents are going to be so concerned i'm responsible for these kids and one of the kids is like did you realize it's midnight no, they would have already been at the church. The 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 police, the school, you know, the parents would have they knew oh. where they were gonna go. I'm sure it just wasn't a willy nilly field trip. See willy nilly. There we go. Yeah, wow. But, but yeah. She, but when she calls the cop when the weird thing shows up at her window, they're there in oh, like yeah. thirty seconds. Two oh, seconds. That, <laughs> yeah. I apparently it's like they're the ones out there doing it. Man. You know? <laughs> Oh, Seriously, if I'm ever in trouble, I hope I'm in Italy because you, you call the police and boom, they're right there. It's like very well, impressive. Uh, but they're but they're useless. They don't believe you. Apparently. Although although once again, once again, all of our viewers, important safety tip. If you're being attacked by a monster and through some miracle the cops show up three seconds after Say you call them, <laughs> do not tell the police that you were chased by a monster. They're gonna think you're a crazy person, which probably mm-hmm. is the way to bet. But just in case it really happens, you tell them uh, it was a, a crackhead, for man. example. Don't yeah. believe that. Yeah, some weirdo. Tell them it was and a then goat. they'll go investigate. A goat. Huh? Mm-hmm. Tell them it was a goat. There was a goat at my window. Goat. Yeah. There's a crazy <laughs> goat inside that's attacking me. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so hey, anyway. It works for me. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to mess with goats. No, what's well, you mentioned uh, the, the DVD <laughs> box uh, or Goat Boy? Yeah, Have I don't you know. Seen what a fight like, like mountain goats? Yeah. They're tough. Yeah. They are. I've, no, I've been chased sure. by farm I'm goats. Sure. No, they they, no, they, they, they have horns. If you're walking across the, the barnyard, yes. you know, then they're you're not looking. Yeah, you you end can't up turn your, your back on. <laughs> no, you know, absolutely. You better not turn your back, or there's going to be you know, there's going to be some pain, some repercussions. I mean, I'd rather face a goat than a bull. But oh sure, yeah. I'd rather face a chicken right, so, than either one. 
Bill was Bill was nice <laughs> enough to pull up some uh, posters and some pictures for us here. So I don't know. These oh. are actually pretty cool, but I where where were they used? Like these landscape. Yeah, I don't know. I, I get, it, it, I they think look like I, uh, lobby cards or something. Yeah, they look like nice, cool lobby cards, which you don't see much anymore. Just like good posters, you don't see much of them anymore either. Well, that was a weird thing too. That oh yeah, that, that demon that, head made out of bodies or something. I don't that, know. That's yeah, that awesome. It and was. see, that thing came out from the ground. Too. Yeah. I mean, think about how much that thing. She's so cute when she freezes. <laughs> oh, Crystal. It's like three homely guys and this one picture of a beautiful woman that we stuck up in I know, the car I know. to keep the viewers around. Three homely <laughs> guys? Yeah, three. <laughs> <laughs> she'll, be, she'll be back. Uh, so I don't know. Is one of these a DVD one, Bill? I think the one on the bottom. Yeah. Um, although I don't think they would be able to show that one in Walmart. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that actually doesn't look, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, there she is. Back. She's back. Yeah. Well, you were going to say something about what, about her? She was talking about the, the demon head coming out of the ground. Yeah. How and cool. about how expensive. How yeah. Expensive that would be, all. that'd yeah. be a pricey set right there. Yeah. I love the dude though on the front that was, and he was, how he was moving oh, and yeah, the mud had... made it, made it look so crazy. That's a committed yeah. actor right there. Yeah, that is yeah. a <laughs> Yeah. No, he's he's there for the he's there for the long haul, and that doesn't look That's comfortable because awesome. they're all covered in uh, mud. Dirt or something. Yeah, and he's like, so listen, my whole ass will be showing the whole time. Yeah. So my <laughs> yeah, ass will be not his face, not yeah. his face. So you know, it's like, well, yeah. So you know, mm, yeah. Okay, and then we yeah. had. Uh, well, that's getting into some of the gore, but I want to <laughs> I want Bill to explain this for me. Okay, so we kind of joked around about this, and Chad can jump in too. Um, but I've seen demons, but mm -hmm. I don't believe I've seen demons too. And this Same one, damn movie, Same was, movie. Uh, okay, okay. Originally, uh, originally, it's well, impossible. Just a second. This. Originally, Umberto Bava was working on this, right? Or yes. Lamberto Bava, Lamberto. and he was he was doing Demons Three, right? Because he and did he one and two it. somewhere along the line. Argeno said, nah, we're not doing that. And right. Or so Avi so said said, I want it to be a little bit more sophisticated than, yeah. than demons. Let's go, let's kind of veer off of that course. Yeah. So like, the king, he wanted it to be its own movie. Yeah, so Suavi gets really ticked when somebody calls it Demons Three, as from what I understand. The poster yes. in the middle is pronounced the Agra, just if we're gonna be consistent. So how we're <laughs> Yeah. Lamberto made a movie called The Ogre, which then later on got released as Demons 3. And then there's Demoni 3, wow. which is, I think, a completely different movie from... Joe Bob Briggs does a whole routine on demons and how complicated this, this thing is. I think he, I think it is in during the commentary for the church. Um, no. Oh, I missed that if that was... No, 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 no. I'm not... I think for demons. For demons, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so it's, yeah, it's and looking at IMDb, there's like a Demon Seven. I don't know if there's any relation at all, or if it's just taken off and they're just anybody's throwing that on there. Yeah, yeah. It's like Fulci's Zombie. They, there's like right. five or six, seven that had nothing to do with. They're yeah. just in name only sequels. The so. but I could I could see where this could have been a Demons, uh, a perfectly good yeah, Demons yeah. movie if if, yeah. the, if the people trapped in the church had been more of a factor. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling like that was from the original concept. It's a bunch of people. Okay, so like Demons 1, they're trapped in a movie theater. Demons 2, where were they trapped? They're oh trapped God. somewhere and they're turning into demons. I think it was like in an apartment complex or something. Uh, I yeah, I think so. The listeners yeah. at home are going, idiots! Idiots, fools, why are you on this podcast? Why am I not on this podcast with a pretty lady? Yeah, well, you snooze, you lose. So um, all of these are called <laughs> Demon 3, apparently, right? Is what you're saying, Bill. At some point, I think at some point in its life, every movie has been called Demons 3. <laughs> for at least 15 minutes. 
<laughs> is that what the box looked like? That the church thing right there? Yes. That? Isn't that uninspired? Yeah, I, yeah, I would so, never. Yeah. I would okay, have never yeah. picked that up. I mean, so look how is, bad that fire looks. I, it looks like look garbage. Look how bad the font. The font is garbage. The font is like when, when I first got a word processor that could do different fonts. I was stupid with those fonts. Like I, I tried to make every word a different mm. font because that's the thing you do when you're a moron and you just discovered it for the first time. <laughs> And that's the kind of ugly ass font that I would think, oh, this is so cool, and, and it's totally yeah. not. It's awful. I would have, I would, have, I would have never picked this movie up unless I had read about it. Yeah, no me. way. Uh huh. Yeah, um, yeah that's that just tells you nothing probably, about the movie mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it sounds boring. The name, the name of the movie, the church. I mean, yeah. Eh. Yeah, the ch church, church is one of those words that doesn't scream. I got to go see yeah. this movie because. Right. You know, it's like, no, I, I'm supposed to go to church, but I'd rather go see a movie. Let's go see a movie called The Church. Mm -mm, no, no, no. That You're mm -mm. beating the whole person. The, the story is kind of cool. You know, when you get. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. It is a I cool like story. It. Mm -hmm. it is. And and I think if they'd had some more compelling characters to go along with it. And, you know, I know they say, well, look, we can't. We don't have time to introduce all these great characters and get you to like them and everything. And I say horse crap. When I think of a movie like Battle Royale. Mm -hmm. 40 kids, 40 10th graders stuck on an island with things around their neck that are going to explode and they got to kill each other. And that movie makes gets you to know a good chunk of those 40 kids. Maybe you, maybe some of them you only know for 30 seconds or a minute or so, but they write them well enough that you get where this character is coming from. And as most of them die, you, you actually care about it. It can be done. It takes effort. Or you can just have them show up and get killed by whoever's at Camp Crystal Lake or the demons that are coming out. And it makes no difference. They're just there to die. Mm -hmm. Were they implying that the priest or whatever was in the past with the girl? Is that what the point was there? The archery thing? I, I'm just trying to figure out if some of it was lost lost in translation in some way. That could you be. You know, because cause they were showing like flashbacks for him. And we know that Asia's character was obviously in the past, you know, because mm -hmm. she was still kind of living it and stuff. But I think he was as well with the archery and stuff, but it wasn't clear. Out. Well, I think it was supposed to be implied that it was her in a past life mm -hmm. because once she saw that uh, woodcut, yeah. she started, you know, she started yeah, remembering her, it. her, I get. But what about the, the priest? I think the Gus, priest too, right? About, uh, Father Gus? Yes. Yeah. The one that was doing the archery. But he wasn't yeah. shown in the flat. He wasn't shown in the opening. None of those characters were. Well, it was him in a past life. So he would, he would have been, I guess, someone different, yeah. right? Technically. Well, Azia looked like the same girl, but uh, she yeah, it would, I mean, yeah. She did. But. Because yeah. it would have been interesting. Because it did right, kind of show him. Yeah. It would have been interesting I think if he that was like the priest that, that told mm -hmm. them to kill all these people. And now, you know, now he's reincarnated and he realizes the error of his ways or something. I mean, that would be an interesting touch. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't get that. Well, I think you're right because you do lose something in translation sometimes. And, and uh, I, I <laughs> little things strike me. Like when she calls the police, when Lisa calls the police, and what does she say when she wants him to get there in a hurry? Come quickly. Come quickly. I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then, and if you notice when, when the main dude is having his first, she's like, she puts a thing up to his ear and she's like, do you hear the horses? Mm -hmm. The way he reacts to that says to me that there's something with it. like he knows the sound of the horses. He knows, yeah. like, I think they were uh, all part of that in the past too, but it just didn't translate mm. very well. Yeah. That's, well, a cool that idea. Idea. That's a cool idea. That's a cool idea. Yeah. yeah. That that right. that makes a lot of sense, but I love the idea of the architect and this this uh, intricate archaic mechanism. You know. That, that... Oh yeah, that. I've was always hard. I've always liked that premise. If you ever saw the movie, it's a terrible movie up until the last ten minutes. It's called Land of the Pharaohs. It's one of those yeah, like Cecil cool. B. DeMille type movies, and it's eh, boring, boring, like subpar Ten Commandments stuff until the end when they're in this pyramid and this guy has created these contraptions that everything will start moving. It's like a game of mousetrap mm -hmm. where yeah. you break this one urn and sand pours out, which causes something else to move, which causes something else to move, which causes pyramids to slide around each other. And a Sphinx gets up and says, hi, you know, just all these cool things that are going on <laughs> seem very unlikely to work, but it's a cool thing. And yeah, that was, you know, 
come on. Now, just just make a lever like Brides of Frankenstein. Just one lever. Just, to no, no, Frankenstein. not the blow us all to Adam's lever. <laughs> just yeah. yeah. I had that put in. And now that I area. now I'm thinking maybe I should have never had that lever put in. You know? <laughs> really, what does it do? Or why? When would Warner I use Brothers it? ever push the wed one? <laughs> the wed one. All right. So, the web, the web button. Um, here's the uh, some of the uh, gore here. Um, I'm having a hard time. So the one the one on the top, and I apologize to the people on the audio podcast. You need to come over and check us out on YouTube. We're throwing yeah. some some uh, photos up here. Uh, the one on the top is when for, poor <laughs> Frau Bruckner uh, <laughs> <laughs> gets it. Just for wanting her glasses, you know, it's, it's all. Oh, yeah. She she loses her glasses and she becomes like Stevie Wonder blind. Like <laughs> someone has actually said, take her by the hand and walk her through the church. It's like, you don't need glasses. You need a dog. I mean, that's that's really, you know, bad eyesight there. But then she gets her glasses on just in time to see way too late. The nasty pointed gate coming toward you. Well, and that's when... Uh... So why don't you describe these, Bill? What's the, the center one? The center one is uh, the hands coming out of the bag, that stupid boy there yeah. decided to uh, look into. And then the one on the bottom, I think, is Herman. I, I'm trying to remember. Are those tentacles? Or, or what What exactly was that he's – because, gosh, he's emoting his little heart out, but I, I can't remember exactly <laughs> uh, what it was. You know, I actually had a hard time finding good shots from this yeah. movie. It's interesting. There's the the really key scenes. It's hard to find good pictures of. There's there's a couple of good pictures of that demon head made out of bodies, but there's mm -hmm. uh, not a real good picture of the maybe for good reason the demon rape scene, which is very clear on film. <laughs> right. I wasn't sure if we could show that without having YouTube uh, get upset with us. These are weird times, but um, I, I yeah. Actually, yeah. Um, let's see, what was, I had some other stuff here. This is more like the supernatural stuff. So there's the, uh, demon head rearing its, uh, rearing its ass. It looks like a, yeah. you guys thought it was, it was, it looked like a demon's head to me. Was, yeah. That's what I got. Like the devil. See that, devil that did not even occur to me until Chad mentioned it. Now I can't unsee it. So yeah. Uh, you know, well, it's, it's up all. when it's up close, you can't really tell. Yeah. It just looked like a mass of bodies, but. You know the you know the creepiest thing about the rapey demon those damn teeth. Yeah, man, that thing is creepy. The most human thing about him is the scariest thing. The rest of it is just yeah, okay, that's a special effect. Oh, those teeth, they look unnaturally human. Yeah, nasty. Human Uncanny teeth. Valley. Yeah. Stop it, cat. Stop. Stop it. You know that never works. No, it never works. No. I don't know why it bothers. Like they don't even understand the words I'm saying. So. Have you seen? I have not seen. I've seen uh, Cemetery Man, but I mm -hmm. haven't seen. Oops, I jumped down to uh, Asia. I was going to pull up McKaylee Suave first. So, Stage Fright is what I want to see. I have not seen, but I have seen Cemetery Man oh. and uh, The Church. Any other ones that. There's The Sect, which I haven't seen. Is The Sect at all related to The Church? I don't know. I've never seen The Sect. Hmm. Seems like it could be. He um, he really had a great beginning with, you know, just nailing some really cool films. Cemetery Man was like, whoa, this guy's going places. Mm -hmm. And then just as suddenly he stopped making films. And, and my, my understanding was he had a child who was very ill. And so he took time oh. off to take care of his family, which is if there's any good reason to stop making movies, that's pretty much at the top of my list for best reasons. Mm -hmm. I've always admired uh, people who, uh, you know, deal yeah. with what's really important and all um but i you know i'm kind of sorry uh i like to you know he, he sort of got in as the italian horror film industry was dying this is kind of like the last gasp and you know we haven't seen anything really great from argento in the last couple decades and you know so i don't i don't know if uh if there's any possibility or interest that he will come back and, and do some stuff, but because I think he is making films again, but the yeah. industry is just not where it needs to be to really uh, yeah. showcase this sort of thing again. But I love Cemetery Man. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Back, that's 
is one of the uh, best has some of the best creature effects in it yeah the imagery yeah. is yeah phenomenal. and just great great stuff I don't know if it's a sequel or not, but the sect says a lonely kindergarten teacher discovers a secret well in the basement of her house and soon finds herself being followed by a murderous satanic cult. So there's always a hole in the ground. Something's trying to come Yeah, maybe out. they build her house over where that church collapsed. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, I bet she reaches in and pulls out a bag and then wants to see what's in it. Well, it looks like it's done. Or the that. subway just runs through there. <laughs> yeah. So this movie did teach me something that if you're ever hit by a subway, your face turns into like a big uh, bag, bag of poop, yeah. bag of oatmeal, and you just go. Oh, you yeah. know, it just, Cheerios or oatmeal or something. Yeah. So yeah I take I, it back about this. I, I, this is how I want to go. <laughs> yeah. Hang it, hang it down and see yeah, the just, just, just hold on to me till I become a soggy bag of oatmeal. Right. Right. Suddenly the, the death by, um, you know, Con what was that yeah. thing? Jackhammer seems dignified compared yeah. to what happened to that poor girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it looks like Suave for the last decade or so has done mostly uh, Italian TV series. Yeah. Uh, I don't That's what happened with Liberto Baba, too. You know, this seems like the, the film industry pretty much went kaput, but they can still do some stuff on TV. That's a shame, though. Yeah. Well, and he was, you, did you recognize him as the uh, policeman? Oh, okay. He was no. the, the oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Had lines, <laughs> the, the one that had lines. Yeah. Uh, was it the goat? Did you see a goat? <laughs> I think I think the problem with the Italian film industry is that the budget just got bad. It was like, okay, uh, we want you to make this movie. We're going to give you two billion lira, and you're like, oh, oh, oh. then you find out what that means. You're like, oh, so this is for TV, huh? <laughs> So, <laughs> uh, Asia, 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 Argento. So, a couple of shots from this film. Cute little thing. Just such mm -hmm. a little, she is. She is. Tiny little thing. And it is. You know, that's a thing in, I don't, I'm trying to think if it's in, it doesn't seem to me like it's all Italian films, but it does seem like it's most of Argento's film. There's, Something creepy with a young girl in there, usually. Uh, uh -huh. There's something creepy, all right. Uh, well, I just think it's kids in general. I mean, I was thinking about Fulci. Like, he seemed to like weird kids. Doing yeah, he liked weird, weird kids. Argento liked yeah. these these beautiful little girls that are in danger. And, and in an Argento film, there's no guarantee that if you're introduced to one, that she's going to make it to the end. Mm -hmm. yeah. She might just have her head sawed off and dumped down a, you know, waterfall it's but it, it was a little creepy having his daughter now again he wasn't the director he was one of the uh, co-writers he was a producer but having his how old was she 14 then so yeah she was she was probably 13 when this film was when, when this was filmed um but it is creepy to have uh in a film her father's well it's creepy anyway yeah. for somebody to to look under a table to try to look up the dress of a 13 year old. And then mm -hmm. other than other 13 year olds, maybe. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, and then, oh, could you go open that window? You know? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, he's made a number of movies with her now that she's an adult. And, I, you know, I, I'm not saying there's anything untoward about this. I mean, art, art, art is art. I'd love to make a movie with my daughters, but. I sure wouldn't be making any movies with my daughters that had my daughters in the nude. It's just that. But I'm not judging. I'm not saying there's anything necessarily wrong. It's just, you know, different uh, people have different ways of looking at this. It's I'm not sure how to do this now with. Uh, just the three of us? Yeah. I'm trying to think of a, a layout that will. It's going to cover somebody. We'll try this. I'll let it cover me. I'll lean this way. The three uh -huh. stages. Hello, the, uh, hello, hello. Uh, she'll probably be back in a second here. Yeah, hopefully. So you had a couple other ones here. So that is that with Daria, with her mother? Let's see. On the let's, bottom. Yes, yes. And yeah. and let's just say, thank God she got her mother's looks and not her dad's. <laughs> Isn't it funny how that works out, though? Very you true, know? very true. Nastasha yeah. Kinski, um, Liv Tyler, right? Um yeah, there's you a know, dad because it could go either way, and maybe maybe we don't see. Yeah, I mean, good God, look, oh, geez, 
if she'd ended up looking like Dario with longer hair. She'd still be making horror movies, but she wouldn't be the, the attractive uh, victim. She'd be the monster. Oops. There she is. Yay, Crystal. That's what I like to hope. It's better. But yeah, I've, I forgot how much stuff she's been in. Mm -hmm. She's been in yeah. a lot. Land I think, of the, I think yeah. Triple, yeah, Land of the Dead was great. I think Triple X is the one that she's mm -hmm. best yeah, you known got that for. One. Mm -hmm. And then she started making her own movies, which I've always found just a little, kind of a little too artsy mm -hmm. You know, not really yeah. my my thing, but um, you know she she's achieved some some re reputation, some notoriety, and then of course the last few years she got pulled into the whole Me Too movement with Weinstein, and then started having some trouble of her own. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know where all that stands right now. It's unfortunate. It's really well. She uh, she settled with a guy that said whatever about her. Okay. I don't necessarily know or believe that it was true. I mean, you've got to listen to the victims, but right, they settled right. that. So uh, that matter w is closed. So that's Good. something, I guess. You know. And, you, and you, you know, you feel like uh, part of the problem with a, a lot of the, the whole Me Too thing is that some of the some of the actresses who came forward do have skeletons of their own. But that's sort of what happens also when you're abused. That, yes. that you know you will turn to drugs and you'll probably make some really make bad, bad decisions, decisions and everything. Yeah. you know mm -hmm. and, and that's not to, you know if they victimized other people shame on them but what's the real root cause of things like that so but you know it's too bad because i think she she has talent she's she's an unusual she's beautiful in an unusual way mm -hmm. and clearly has a mind of her own she's got a hell of a, a pedigree and everything but i i don't know i i guess there's more to be her story's not over yet and maybe it'll Maybe it'll take some better turns. But she's so she's so cute and innocent in this in this movie. It's it's oh, sad yeah. knowing knowing what's going to happen, you know. Um so we had a few other ones, a few other people here. Uh and this guy, I feel like I should know him. He's he's like the okay. lead actor on all the yeah. things. Star Wars. Or she. He was in uh, Phantom Menace. That's yeah. what oh. I recognized him from. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's that right there on the bottom is yeah, he's in Star Wars. That's not too bad. Yep. Dark. Dark. <laughs> um so he oh, and was he in the original the Highlander too. Highlander too? I think he no also Highlander. In yeah. the original yeah. Highlander, yeah. He was the guy killed by the Carpathian. Oh, uh, and he was in now I think I know where I've seen him recently was in uh well, he was in Nightbreed, but in Red Sparrow. I don't know if you guys saw that or not. Hmm. I never um, saw that one. He was uh, one of the detectives or cops in Nightbreed, I think. Yeah. Yep. What? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. He's also Nightbreed, done some the Nightbreed, theories. He, mentioning the, wow. I knew I was like, God, he looks so familiar, but I just don't know from where. From a lot of stuff. He's good in this movie, but I just feel like he, he felt it felt to me like he came into the movie kind of late and then became the protagonist. But that's not where the movie had been going early on. Maybe yeah, I, maybe I wasn't paying right. enough attention, but we're, we're introduced to him and he doesn't do much except for that one scene where he carries his uh, his assassin's bow. I guess it's in like this broke down case and takes it out to shoot <laughs> at a target. And that's all he does. And then we don't see him again for a while. Mm -hmm. right? But that's when he sees the uh, the knights coming for him, I guess. Hmm. All right. And, and you know what? I thought the acting in this was decent. Um, mm -hmm. Well, as usual, it's the, dub, the well. dubbing. That the dubbing of, makes yeah. it hard to tell how good the actors mm -hmm. are because... I think that was the biggest thing. Um, it, it looks like one of those that was uh, filmed in, in English language, but it's still dubbed anyway. Right. Um, mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Uh, and this is the, I think, was the worst one in terms of dubbing. Uh, like the voice they used for her didn't match the way she looked at all to me. Yeah. Um, I don't know. But That's as far her, as her facial uh, expressions and her acting, yeah. I think she was she was fine. Very beautiful, yes. and, and I loved her in in uh, Cemetery Man, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I, I guess Soavi likes her too if he's used her twice. You know. Especially in Cemetery Man, where she represents like the most beautiful woman in the world, the, the character that the the hero keeps falling in love with. Yeah. 
But what happened? Okay, so what happened to her in the end? Is is the last time we see her, she's being ravished by the demon? Yeah, I think the whole building yeah. just collapsed. Yeah, everyone just off. died from them being yeah, crushed. You see, yeah, I, I just I feel like if we've been if we've been expected to follow these characters for this long, give us some payoff here. Yeah. Even if it's you know, the, uh, and then the building fell apart. It's like, well, what happened to Lisa? Well, she was in the building, so she guess she got crushed. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. Well. So I want I need to uh, just for people that are more into original titles. The Cemetery Man is also Delamorte Delamore. Yeah, yeah. I just love that picture like, on the bottom. That's like a a pre Raphaelite painting. You cool. know, it's just beautiful. It is. It is. It's very neat. Um, I think we got Thomas Arana was a guy I started talking about. Tomas Arana, I think, or maybe Arana, or or maybe Arana, or <laughs> just the, he was in uh, Dark Knight Rises. Was he? He yeah. played. I think he really? played um, Bruce Wayne's lawyer or or something. No. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. It's been a while since I've seen hmm. it. Yeah. But Gladiator. Um, Hmm. Uh, born I'm supremacy I think. yeah He's, guardians of the galaxy hmm. he was the Cree ambassador I haven't seen that so hmm. yeah he does he has an intense look and he he's a perfect to play in a lot of those uh i don't know political spy thriller type things right mm -hmm. yeah yeah one guy that some, i did uh, i did recognize right off the bat was the guy that played the bishop Fader Chalapin as the guy who uh -huh. was in uh, the, the the old man from uh, Moonstruck that had all the dogs. Oh, that's the, right. The right. That's right. Oh, yeah. Okay. He, and he was certainly in old man roles. Right. He was certainly recognizable, but I I, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't I didn't connect that for a long time until I watched it this time. Then. Yeah, Moonstruck. Oh, let's see. Name of the Rose. Okay. Yeah, he's just, I mean, he's got an amazing old craggy, yeah, you know, a lot of character in that look. Place. I mean, you know, yeah. if, if he were still alive when they were doing Game of Thrones, they should have stuck him up on the wall. You know, he's, he's just yeah. got that. Look. I, he was, he was over 80 in this film, which I, you know, I mean, he mm -hmm. does look old, but good for him. Yeah. Um, and out of, Probably, I guess, out of everybody in the film. They don't have lots of credits, which is kind of interesting. I don't know if that's a trademark of... All right. We talked about, I don't know, anybody got any... I mean, the old couple that Chad read the quote from, ah. that oh, was kind were. of a good... That was kind of a cool running gag there. That's... They were a hoot. When she was ringing the bell with his severed head, I was dying. <laughs> I was dying. Well, and it's weird because they set it up perfectly, but then they 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 cut to another scene for for a little bit, not very long, and then they come back because he's he says this stupid. She asks him for some. We can't find any rope, so it'd be nice if she'd give me some input. And he comes back with this "you old yeah line," yeah. and then she goes, uh, "I think I have another idea." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. I like these people have the best relationship in the movie. It's like he's just a cantankerous old bastard who insults her to her face. And she either has completely filtered it out by this point, ignores him, <laughs> or is genuinely so stupid she doesn't even know that he's he's doing this. So whatever. They they're making it work. They're gonna they're 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 they've been married for a long time. They're, and making they're gonna it stay work. married. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Up yeah. Until the murder suicide that'll end this horror. <laughs> they uh <laughs> But but when the, whoever they did the dubbing, I want to shake his hand because they're like, he's a cranky old man. Can you do a cranky old man voice? It's like, can I do a cranky old man voice? Like, wow, whoa, Gabby A's, tone it down. Awesome. Uh, she was great too. Everything was fab or groovy or something. <laughs> Don't you want some of these groovy biscuits? <laughs> In my day, we didn't call them groovy biscuits like a damn hippie. <laughs> uh, anyway. no battle axe. Um, here's, a, here's another word you don't hear often. Old battle axe. For good reason, um, yeah. 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 So, any any uh, final comments about this? I think we've kind of talked this through pretty well. There's just some, 
it's just crazy all the way through. And, and sometimes yeah. I think there's, I feel like there's something missing. Well, the music, let's talk about the oh, music. Oh, the music that's, was that's good. Just I like the music a lot. Crystal, well, you it's, mentioned. It's, go ahead. Well, I was, I was waiting for Crystal to say something, but she's just gazing she's, adoringly she's, at, at she's Goat Boy. Yeah. There she is. <laughs> yes, I love the music. Oh, God. I'm like, I just checked my internet connection, too, and it's fast, so I don't understand. I don't know what's happening. Storms so are coming. Must be my, might be my computer. But, yeah, no, I loved the music. Actually, it was really soothing at points. Mm. And then they had some fast, you know, movie. I don't know. I have really found the music enjoyable. I mean, it was something. Dang. Oh, yeah. well, I think um, it was I think it was by a couple of different people and, that were doing the music. I think it was by Emerson from Emerson Lake and, and Palmer. Lake and, Palmer, and then no. Goblin did some. And he didn't like I, I don't think Argento or Suave yes. liked what, what he came up with, so they only kept a few bits and then they, they got one of the guys from Goblin to do the rest. So yeah. it is a mixture, but I, I thought it worked. It turned out well. really well. Yeah. yeah. And then they used some uh Philip Glass pieces only as mm -hmm. the uh um you know, it wasn't. I don't think it was composed for the movie. Just already done things. Um, yeah, I think the beginning. If you, uh, the opening sequence has uh, Oregon kind of trailing around through there. I think that's what em what uh, Emerson did. Hmm. Um, at least that's what I, I saw somewhere in a description. But yeah, then yeah, they didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. For the rest, that, of that it. style of music really, really. T gets you in the mood it's it's so distinctive it instantly takes you back to the 80s italian 80s mm -hmm. horror movies oh nothing yeah nothing else sounds quite like it you lo i love that um <gasps> chorus with all the voices yes. singing up yeah oh yeah. man that's just what in goblin is awesome when they do stuff like mm -hmm. have any of you gone to any of the concerts that they'll do occasionally i mean not no, so much i more. want to so badly <laughs> Oh, Every time it happens, that. I say, I'm going to go next time. And then next time, you know, now, of course, next time hasn't been around for a while. But they, they show, like, the visuals the, behind them. And they have mm -hmm. the, the Giallo-style lighting. And everyone who's gone to it tells me, you got to go. Just go. You've got to love it. And I'm pretty sure. Well, I when we covered uh, Prince of Darkness, um, mm -hmm. Carpenter emulated that a lot in that soundtrack, mm -hmm. that, type yes. of, that type of sound. And it's just, that's mm -hmm. what makes, to me, that's what makes that. Just one of my favorite soundtracks is well, that's you know it's actually something I wanted to mention when we did Prince of Darkness mm -hmm. that that there were some scenes in there that were very giallo esque when, yeah. when the guy is yeah. killed outside and we see like the rays are moving you know in mm -hmm. front of the camera that's that's straight out of the playbook you yeah. know mm -hmm. it seemed like an homage to to that sort of thing so yeah that's that's they could filmmakers should feel free to bring that back. If they're looking for yes. something, oh, some, I uh, agree. Something, some corpse to cannibalize. Let's let's bring back Giallo, maybe with more plot and better yes. writing, but mm -hmm. bring the yeah. style too. You know, write some steak, but put some sizzle on it too. Yeah. It's, it's just a beautiful look. I agree. Me too. The uh, and apparently we haven't mentioned this before, but the. Uh, According to some information, the film's gross was lessened because originally the Italian board gave it a FM 18 certificate for the many particularly violent and shocking scenes which are considered unsuitable for the sensitivity mm -hmm. of the spectators in developmental age. Mm. Uh, but then later on they said, eh, nah. Eh, <laughs> eh, the kizzle. That's what therapy's for. It's not that big a deal. I mean, I wonder. I wonder if it was partly just the whole. You know, you, you, you're always running a risk anytime you mix horror and religion. Mm -hmm. oh. You know. Yeah. Well, yeah. Especially, it's interesting to me. Um, anyway. Yeah. That it's a lot of these are in Italy, the home of the Catholic Church. So. But but they but they get away with a lot. I mean, there's there's a lot of Italian horror films where you know the priest is the bad guy, so they're accepting that. I, I don't I don't find it strange that the German churches turn them down. I mean, seriously, if they saw a copy of the script, it's like, oh yeah, so uh, no, oh, I don't a, a, a goat demon is raping a woman on an altar. Well, it's been great talking to you. Get the hell out of my church. <laughs> you know, seriously. Yeah. And, and a, a fish demon's coming out of the baptismal font, so we oh, got that, that going yes. for us, too. Um, 
All right. Any any last comments? Anybody? No, it's a good flick. If you, if you yeah. haven't seen it, seek it out. it out. It's on. It's on. Is it Prime? That's on right now. I yes, believe it's, it's on, on Prime. Amazon Prime. Yeah, and Amazon mm-hmm. Prime. Yeah. Yeah. You got to see if you're a fan of of Italian horror and stuff. This is one of the better ones. And you don't need to watch anything else. It's a one and done. Mm-hmm. It's not mm-hmm. a. It's not a prequel. It's not a sequel. It's not part of a series. You um, don't need to watch Demons One, Demons Two, and the other three or four Demons Three. <laughs> no. <laughs> Though we highly recommend you do that. Sure. So you should yeah, do that yeah. anyway. But you don't have to. They can make this one your first. Mm-hmm. Yay. Okay. So, that wraps it up for the church. Are we going to talk about what? Well, first we oh, have some next. feedback. First oh, we have good. some okay. feedback. Oh. And I, I actually did my job, so to speak, and went through and filled it out all the feedback. And there's a bunch to cover, but we're just going to do it by episode. So this is feedback for uh, episode 169, Pumpkinhead. Oh yeah. Uh, and our own Whitney Cayazzo made a yeah, comment. Hey. Oh, said yeah, this was did. my intro to Lance Henriksen. Was this film? Mm. <laughs> Good intro. My dad loves this one. And later on, I got to work on a film with Lance Hendrickson. My oh. interaction was very minimal because I was so slammed with makeup effects. But life's funny. That's, That's very awesome. cool with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, they were lucky to have her. She's very talented. But that, mm-hmm. that's really neat to, to you know, fall in love with a film and the, the people in it and then actually get to work with them. Yeah. That's really cool. It is. It is. Um and I think we talked about it at the time that he was a, a pretty nice guy to be around on the set. Although sometimes he gets too immersed in the character. Mm-hmm. Um, so here's one from Andy Morton, who I believe is uh, in the UK. Andy. Says, yeah, Andy. And yeah, we've had a few conversations. Yeah. Uh, he says, never seen this one. The cruise enthusiasm and Bill Mulligan's wow. mention of folk horror suggest mm-hmm. I should dive in. Ah, and I think Bill should. and I both strongly encouraged him to, yeah. to do oh, so. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't heard back, but... I'm sure he'll like it. And, and, you know, hey, English. The English filmmakers are the ones who pretty much invented folk horror. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. And some mm-hmm. of the best examples are from England. So, yeah, I think he'll like it a lot. Our, our, our weird Appalachian mountains are just as scary as some of the Cornish tin mines and moors of Scotland oh, yeah. and all the other yeah. stuff you can get out there. We got our own weirdness here. All right. And the final one from Nick Cadman. Yay, Nick. Uh, Yay, Nick. Also from the UK, who guest hosted on a classic era yes. episode where he picked Ani Baba, is what we covered. When, uh, that was a oh, great wow. episode, too. Great it episode. was. It was. And Nick says, great episode, guys. I got to say, despite seeing it pop up in Fangoria a lot back in the day, I didn't get to see this movie until maybe last year or the year before, and it really wow. holds up. Sometimes these things just don't age well for one reason or another, but the folklore and world building around this mythology and the heart and soul that was clearly put into making Pumpkinhead make it a stone classic that bears repeat viewing, in my opinion. Awesome. Hey, that's you know what? That's an excellent point that, a lot of these things don't age well. If you have a horror movie set in a mall in the 1980s, it kind of looks like a 1980s mall, <laughs> and, that, and that dates it right away. But you do something set in the deep, dark crevices of the mountains, you, you get a feeling that those people probably are still living the way they are. They were in the 80s now. Yeah. There hasn't been. That's the whole problem with those areas is that not a lot has changed. Poverty is still poverty. And uh, so, yeah, that does give them a kind of ageless quality. I guess it's yeah. some more version of like a gothic. So cool. Yeah, good point. It, it has yeah. held up. That movie could be released this year. Yeah. And I think it wouldn't suffer for it. Appreciate it, Nick, Andy, and Whitney. Sorry it took us so long to uh, get to the feedback. But uh, I am now caught up, and I, 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 I vow to stay caught up. <laughs> so we'll be reading more feedback on the next few episodes. Awesome. 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 Uh, next one will be um, Nightmare on Elm Street. We've got oh, some feedback oh, sure. from that one. Yeah, oh, I thought good. he was going to talk talking about the movie. I was like, okay. Yeah. Guess. No, okay. no, the feedback on next episode. All right, Groove Believers. Roger that. That's it for this episode. But every two weeks, we'll be focusing on a specific film released between 1980 and 1989. And Bill has chosen the next one. I thought for a change of pace. We should go with a little family-friendly flick. 
<laughs> from was it 81 or something a movie for 80. people who love children and animals <laughs> and found footage <laughs> Oh, I love a found a feel good movie of 1980, whatever still holds up today. Cannibal Holocaust. And I want to apologize ahead of time for any animal lovers or just people with decency and a sense of good taste. <laughs> I, I, you know, this is one of those movies. It is. If you believe that this movie is indefensible. I will not argue with you, but I would also argue that it is a masterpiece, a horrifying masterpiece that should probably, if you're a serious horror fan, watch it once, and then you may wish to never speak of it again. Or what if maybe... you've already watched it once and you don't want to see it again? I well... mean, Joe Bob, on his on Joe Bob's, like, <laughs> doesn't he have it where he warns everybody and stuff, I think? Joe Bob, I'm not sure. Jeff, Jeff, tell him about the, the commentary bit. So I, I, this is a movie that even on Shutter, on Joe Bob Briggs' last drive-in, he did Cannibal Holocaust, and because of the movie itself, you can actually just watch Joe Bob's commentary without the movie. They have a separate uh, option for viewing that. So, and I don't think there's any other movie on there. That That's they've what done. Makes this Look, that, yeah. there's garbage movies out there that are just endurance tests, and that's the only reason to right. watch them, just to prove it's like I watched it and I didn't throw up. Yay me! It's my rite of passage. This is a seriously brilliant movie. That doesn't mean it's something you have to watch. May and it could never be made today. And you can argue that maybe it never should have been made, but it exists, and I think we'll have a lot to talk about. I, this this is a weird movie for me. I really resisted watching it for a long time, and then when I saw it, I felt bad about seeing it, and yet I, I was like, there's a part of me that really thinks this is one of the most amazing movies ever made, but boy, there's well, a lot of people that are going to hate me for even watching it. If you ever watched any true tribal documentaries, mm -hmm. then you will be able to handle this, I think. Right. The oh, only yeah. part that's difficult is the parts that are real. And those are not that different yeah. from actual documentaries. Yeah. I will, I, keep my opinion, I will keep my opinions to myself. All right. We'll, let, All right. Let's keep yeah, this, see, <laughs> we, we, need just, to, we could waste 10 minutes talking about it now. But it's, we so, need to close it's out. It's going to be an experience. Uh, we got everybody's got places to go, things to do. Yeah. Oh, people yeah. To see. Um, not get so, plenty of ways to stay in touch with us. But. If you're listening to this on audio, send us an uh, email or comment to feedback at gruesomemagazine.com or make a comment on our different Facebook groups. You can do it at Gruesome Magazine Facebook group. You can do it at uh, H&R and DOH Facebook group or come to the Gruesome Magazine YouTube channel mm -hmm. and click on that like, subscribe, alerts, whatever. I don't know what all that stuff is. And make some comments. And and rate us, rate we, us on iTunes. Yeah, yeah, and we we get yeah. some interesting comments, and we we love uh, uh, alternative viewpoints. Let's put it that way. Um, <laughs> yeah, argue with us. We want to. We want to. Yeah. and we also have a Patreon uh, group uh, that please subscribe. You know, even a dollar a month, a couple dollars a month. We put out like somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, twenty twenty five podcasts a month. I think. Um, right. So, uh, any any little bit helps with uh, paying. None of us are paid. We we are all volunteers because we, we love, for the love this stuff. Um, but it does cost for uh, equipment and uh, yeah. media hosting and all that stuff. So, and in point of fact, um, I do love money. So it's still we'd still be doing it for the love if we did get paid. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just whatever you whatever you love. Uh, and in fact, if you're a Patreon, you do get some other bonus things. Uh, we, we've got photo shoots with some of the uh, women on uh, Gruesome Magazine, and we also have uh, DOH, Decades of Horror. You get those a week to two weeks early, So and, and other stuff. Go check it out. We have talked right. about doing a Photoshop with some of the men. So if that, if, yeah, you know, maybe you if, totally we get a, a, if we get a total influx of money with people saying, I will double this if uh, we get that, that chance. What was that? What was that? Uh, their rug <laughs> shot. <laughs> I would love. What that. was what was that movie about the calendar in England? Or the, anyway, 
Uh, oh, calendar girls. No, I was thinking of the one. It's about the, the one guys. The full mod. Yeah. Yeah. The full yeah, the full mod. Oh, yeah. oh, yikes. Mm-hmm. Oh, they were just strippers. <laughs> Uh-oh. We're All right, we got to go. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got to go. Yep. And I got to reset just, my internet. <laughs> can't just get here in two weeks for another great horror movie of the 1980s, as only decades of horror can do it. Say good night, guys. Good night. Good night. Gruesome Magazine.